Many thanks for joining me for the next 20 odd minutes as we unpack events unfolding within and beyond Namibia's confines here on Primetime News. Good evening to you all our viewers. I'm Michael Madimba. We start in the capital where a suspected robber was fatally shot this morning on Independence Avenue in the Central Business District. Now, one suspect was apprehended while another escaped during an attempted robbery. Our producer, Lydia P2, was at the scene and filed our lead report. Commissioner Gana Shukwambi of the Nubian Police Force said the incident occurred around 20 to 8 at Kwazi the Taylor Clothing Shop. Allegedly, the owner of the shop, a 47 year old Ghanaian male, received information from a woman of a neighboring salon that his car had been broken into. Shukwambi said immediately he ran outside through a back door and when he reached the entrance, he observed two male suspects coming towards the entrance gate, while one of the suspects stood next to him holding a pistol and a bag with money. The suspect allegedly fired a shot towards him, but he immediately ran outside towards engine, yelling for help as the robbers ran after him. The commissioner also mentioned that near the service station, an off-duty police officer witnessed the shooting. He immediately got out of his vehicle with his service firearm, and when the robbers saw him, they fired shots in his direction. The officer fired back, and during the gunfire exchange, the robbers reportedly dropped the money and fled on foot. Through Independence Avenue. Shikwambi said one of the robbers fell to the ground at the intersection of Independence and Luther Strausser. However, succumbed, he was found with a pistol in his possession and was declared dead by paramedics at the scene. She stated that one suspect was arrested and that the officer was unharmed, while the victim sustained minor injuries. Shukwambi mentioned that $45,000 was recovered. She also noted that a Mercedes-Benz vehicle, which was passing by during the exchange of fire, was hit by one of the bullets causing damage to it. Police investigations into the matter continue. We will keep track in this developing story for you. On to the political front. Representatives of the Electoral Commission of Namibia or EC in, in the Ochoa Jupa region expressed satisfaction on Monday with the total number of eligible voters who have so far registered with the EC in to acquire new voter cards. Sylvia Hashandali brings us more. According to Ocho Zonzupa Regional Electoral Officer Victoria Amutenya in an interview with NAMPA on Monday said a total number of 46,126 eligible voters have so far acquired their new voter cards in the region's seven constituencies of Omatako, Hrutfontein, Oshiwarongo, Okahanja, Okakarara, Otavi and Tumkwe. She said, looking at the regional population of 220,000 and the over 46,000 newly issued voter cards, ECN is impressed to have gone this far in four weeks. She further said, the Oshuarongo constituency has so far registered the highest number of eligible voters with 11,798, while Okahanja is second with 9,776 and Grootfontein in third place with 8,606. Sylvia Ashundali reporting for Primetime News. Up next, we take a look at the Nalafim Summit, which took place yesterday, with Vice President Nitumbo Nandi Ndaitwa noting Namibians should be guided by the principle of a balanced parliament in terms of both young and old, men and women, in the general elections slated for November 2024. More from Sheila Peristrello. Nandi Daitwa emphasized that the expectations is for Namibia to have a balanced parliament in order to have a truly intergenerational national assembly to ensure that developmental programs are focused at addressing the real needs of the Namibian people. Nandi Daitwa also emphasized that women's participation in leadership has been developing. However, those taking up leadership positions received very limited support from the society. Uh, there was a challenge in the sense that when you come to the women getting into the leadership, the support they were getting from the society was very limited. Uh, limited in the sense that I remember in the 60s, most women who were coming into the leadership, they even sacrificed their families. And that is when you go to the research, you'll find it. 
Stila Perestrello reporting for Primetime News. Now, a baffling food crisis exacerbated by the recurring drought, the aftermath of COVID-19 in the high degree of poverty in the Kunene region's poorest constituency of Epupa has affected at least 10,000 residents. This figure represents nearly half of the constituency's population, which currently stands at 26,491 inhabitants. Our Kunene region correspondent Uwa Kutura Kambayeko Father's insert. A Pupa constituency councillor Chimtambo Kuoko, in a recent interview that focused on the constituency's challenges, told Nampa that the increase in food insecurity was not due to the constituency's sluggish economy, but rather drought, which continues to wreak havoc on farmers' livelihoods, leaving individuals dependent on the government feeding program. He further stated that around 2,000 households rely on the food program for survival after most people lost their jobs at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, while majority of inhabitants lost their livestock and crops to drought. He said farmers in the Epupa constituency have not harvested enough crops for the past seven years. Sylvia Shondali reporting for Prime Time News. Primetime Beast brings domestic and international business and economic updates to the fore. Namibia and Ghana need to enhance the coordination and exchange reciprocal visits between the country's various line ministries and agencies in order to ensure full implementation of decisions taken at previous joint meetings. This is according to Executive Director and the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Ambassador Pintananda, who further added the two nations also need to increase visibility of their bilateral cooperation to the larger public. Isabel Bento filed this report. We would recall that the fourth session of the PJCC reviewed the progress of implemented agreements and MOUs. Additionally, we discussed new avenues for cooperation um, in tourism, education, agriculture, fisheries, aquaculture development, trade, economic cooperation, youth and sports development, investments, maritime cooperation, and private sector development. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, get all the officials involved in these sectors to join us today. But we did hold fruitful discussions with them in the two preparatory meetings we held in Accra before our departure for Namibia. Co-Chair Excellencies, it is important for us to remember that the establishment of this PJCC, Permanent Joint Commission for Cooperation, reflects our unified commitment to fully utilize the potential of our partnership across the sectors. Bilateral relations between Ghana and Namibia are excellent and bilateral cooperation continues to grow. Some ministerial visits and exchange and engagements have also taken place. Business interactions between our two private sectors and people-to-people -people contacts have increased. Granted, there has been a slight improvement since the time we last met during the fourth session of our JPCC. However, bilateral cooperation, trade and investment needs to be tangible to match the status of our political relations. The fifth session 
therefore affords us an ample opportunity to increase the momentum generated. It's technocrats. And as we commence our session of the senior officials in preparation for our minister's deliberations, it behoves on us to conduct meaningful deliberations on issues of mutual interest and produce concrete but realistic outcomes, which will bring about meaningful improvement in the lives of our people. We now zoom into the domestic economy. The Bank of Namibia released its 2024 quarterly bulletin recently, indicating the decrease to 5% in inflation from 5.7% registered in the previous quarter, mainly due to lower inflation rates for food and alcoholic beverages. Now, annually, the overall inflation eased by 2.1 percentage points, dropping from 7.1% registered in the corresponding quarter of 2023, owing to a decline in food and transport inflation. The report noted that in May 2024, the annual inflation rate stood at 4.9%, an increase from 4.8% registered in April 2024. Overall inflation is projected to slow to 4.9% in 2024 and 4.5% in 2025, compared to an average of 5.9% in 2023, it said. The domestic economy continued to grow, but at a slower pace during the first quarter of 2024, primarily due to weak performances in the primary and secondary industries. It further said that the economy registered a growth rate of 4.7% during the first quarter of 2024, down from the 5.3% growth recorded in the corresponding quarter of 2023. In the primary industry, the mining sector registered slower growth during the quarter under review diamond production and a decline in uranium output despite robust growth in oil and gas exploration activities further indicating that on the fiscal front government's debt stock and loan guarantees as a percentage of gross domestic product declined at the end of march 2024 compared to the same period a year ago adding that the government debt stock declined to 66.0% at the end of March 2024 from 67.2% during the corresponding period in the previous year, growth in nominal GDP compared to the rise in debt over the period under review. Sheila Perestrello reporting for Primetime News. This is what we had for tonight's top segment. As now we look at tomorrow's countrywide weather conditions followed by a roundup of the latest economic news as well as the Sport Planet segment.
welcome to tonight's Sport Planet segment. We commence with the English Premier League. Chelsea have signed Leicester midfielder Keenan Dewsbury Hall. The Premier League club announced earlier today for a reported fee of £30 million, equivalent to €35 million. Euros. Now, the 25-year-old has agreed a six-year contract at Stamford Bridge and his move means he will be reunited with new Chelsea boss Enzo Marischka after they worked together last season. One consolation for Leicester in losing one of the leading players is that the transfer should help the club in their bid to remain within the Premier League's profitability and sustainability rules. The fee is recorded as pure profit as the midfielder came through the ranks at the Midlands club. On to some Euro 2024 action. Germany winger Leroy Sané said his side could hurt Spain in Friday's Euro 2024 quarterfinal thanks to the impressive return of midfielder Toni Kroos. Sané started from the bench in all three of Germany's pool games but returned to the starting lineup at the expense of Florian Wirtz in Saturday's last 16 win over Denmark. With pre-tournament favourites England and France struggling despite reaching the quarterfinals, Spain have emerged alongside host Germany as favourites for the tournament. Stay tuned for your sports roundup. That's all we had for Tuesday's prime time news installment. Many thanks for tuning in. The midweek edition beckons tomorrow, same place and time, so do catch us. From myself, Michael Medimba, and my dedicated production team, it's adios.